and then we'll start the meeting, okay? Sounds good. Okay. Uh, when your boyfriend comes and um, you go outside, that's cool. But when you come back and close the front door, just because <laughs> I don't want any. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are live streaming. Commissioner Eskridge, Chair Eskridge, when you're ready, you're good to go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, Arts Commission meeting, June 16, 2021. This meeting of the Arts Commission is called to order at 7 p.m. Before we get started, I'd like to remind commissioners of some procedural items before this meeting. Hey, Donna, it looks like I accidentally muted you. Uh, can you unmute yourself and please uh, start off from yeah. the second sentence, please? Sorry. Okay. Where did, should I start from the beginning? Yes, please. Okay. Arts Commission meeting, June 16, 2021. This meeting of the Arts Commission is called to order at 7 p.m. Before we get started, I'd like to remind commissioners of some procedural items for this meeting. During the meeting, commissioners and participants should remain muted when not speaking. If commissioners or participants have a question or comment, please use the raise hand feature. Speakers will be called upon to speak one at a time. A random order voice vote will be administered by city staff for each vote. The Arts Commission meeting is being conducted utilizing teleconferencing and electronic means consistent with State of California Executive Order N2920 regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Members of the public may provide audio public comment by connecting to the teleconference meeting online or by telephone. Use the raise hand feature to request to speak, star nine on the telephone. Teleconference meeting details are available on the Arts Commission meeting agenda. Comments and matters not on the agenda must be submitted prior to the time of the chair calls an item for oral communications. Comments on agenda items must be submitted prior to the time the chair closes the public hearing on the agenda item. Speakers are requested to keep their comments to no more than three minutes and time limits will be enforced. Guidelines are posted on the Art Commission meeting agenda. Automatically generated captions are available to viewers accessing this meet meeting via Zoom. Captions can be displayed or hidden using the live transcript button. Next, can we please have uh, the roll call? Yes. Chair Eskridge? Present. Vice Chair Cerrone? Uh, can you please unmic uh, unmute your mic? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Vaughn? Present. Commissioner Glukman? Present. Commissioner Veith? Present. Council Liaison Mayor Klein? Present. The commission has five commissioners atten uh, attending with zero absent. Okay. Oral, com oral communications. A reminder to the public, please raise your digital hand or dial nine on a telephone if you wish to address the commission on a topic that is not on tonight's agenda. City staff will ask you to unmute your microphone when it's your turn to address the commission. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak under oral communications? None at this time. Okay, next next on the agenda is presentations. Ask any for any questions or public comment at the end of each presentation. Our first presentation is item 210633, Winter in the Park. Uh, Winnie Lynn is going to present for this presentation. And uh, once again, ask for any questions or public comment at the end of the presentation. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you. So hi, everyone. I'm Winnie. Thank you for having me to speak here about the winter holidays proposal to deck up downtown Sunnyvale for the winter holidays. Um, next, please, Ricky. So before I start, I'd really like to thank all the folks in Sunnyvale who had contributed to this proposal. And this includes Vice Chair Cerrone, 
and a number of neighborhood leaders in Sunnyvale and residents as well. Um, Jen Delara, Valeria Kozak, Frankie Callahan, Chris Sosa, Ali Sang, and Alma Cortez Correa. Um, I think a few of those are on the call, uh, of these folks are on the call tonight. So thank you to the community for participating in this discussion. Um, and also thank you to Jason Minsky, who had also provided advice based on his experience as executive director of Christmas in the Park in San Jose. Next, please. All right, so the inspiration for this proposal came from the collective efforts by Sunnyvale residents um, who had lit up the, uh, our community last year where we had installed holiday light arches on several major streets in Sunnyvale. Um, you can see some of the pictures here where we have installed holiday light arches on Sunnyvale Avenue, on McKinley Avenue, and also in Oak Court off of California Avenue. And these were all led by residents, by Jen Delara, by Tom Kuhn, and also by Ali Sang. Um, the feedback for this effort was really positive from the community, um, especially during the time of COVID where people really appreciated the joy and the spark and the happiness that these decorations added to the community. Um, I've, I've shown here just one example of a social media post from next door um, where anonymous neighbors expressed their gratefulness for um, you know, how much they appreciated seeing these lights um, and how serendipitous they had run into it. And so it was, you know, if I may say, one of the most popular posts on social media from last, uh, the last holidays. Next, please. We're also inspired by the activities in nearby cities in the Bay Area, where um, there are cities that have been partnering with uh, local community groups to bring about these winter festivities. For instance, in San Jose, Christmas in the Park has been an annual tradition since the 1980s. Um, my understanding is that it brings 700,000 visitors to downtown San Jose every year. Um, we also see that in Los Altos and Burlingame, there are parades for the holidays and other festivities in Redwood City as well. And so when we look around, we thought, hey, Sunnyvale is a really great city and we wanna do more of these things as well. Um, and, and, you know, back to the, the previous slide that we were talking about before, um, for this year, the local residents that I uh, mentioned earlier, we want to make Oops. the winter holidays bigger and better and covering even longer stretches with holiday arches up and down the streets that, uh, that we had covered last, last year. Next slide, please. Initially, the concept that some of you have seen that we had drafted for the grassy area next to Macy's, um, we have decided to shelf this uh, for a little bit now because of budget and logistics reasons. So initially we had uh, uh, mocked up this concept to put these gingerbread houses um, in that area. And you know, like I said, we're gonna shelf this for now um, because of the complexity involved. And we can certainly revisit it next year if appropriate based on the community's feedback. Next. So there are three proposals that we are sharing tonight um, for downtown Sunnyvale on Sunnyvale Avenue, on Washington Avenue, and another proposal that we don't have a location for yet. So I'm gonna put a TBD there. Um, so the next slide is the first proposal that we're bringing forth, which is, uh, thank you, which is to line up Sunnyvale Avenue with candy canes and cupcakes um, to make it look festive. And so here's a mock-up. Um, you can see a example cupcake um, about a foot and a half high and a foot wide that we are proposing to put between the plant bushes on Sunnyvale Avenue. Um, and so you can see in that picture in the, in the middle of the slide there um, showing what it looks like. And then the picture at the bottom shows how it could look if we're to line up the entire street with such cupcakes. Um, we're also proposing to line the lampposts and the trees and wrap them around so that they look like candy canes. And so these are just some, some of the concepts. Um, next slide, please. So we're proposing to do this um, display for the month of December <clears throat> and showing this on the west side of Sunnyvale Avenue from Washington to Evelyn. Um, the reason why we had selected this street is because it's really well lit. Um, the dirt that is in between those plant bushes that we saw on the previous slide, they're mostly level and there isn't irrigation happening there. And so it's, it's pretty dry ground. 
Um, and our proposal is that we can invite the community to create these cupcakes and candy canes, um, you know, get folks involved who want to volunteer by hosting workshops and providing instructions, et cetera. Um, now, of course, for variety, we could contemplate doing other things as well. Um, we can do some mixture of cupcakes, gumdrops, lollipops, and candy canes. As far as setting up and taking down, we can invite the community volunteers to help with that and returning these pieces back to the volunteers who made them after the, the display period so that we don't have to worry about storage. As far as safety is concerned, in order to prevent theft of these items, um, we're proposing to use cable locks to tie the cupcakes to the adjacent trees and signposts. Um, we can cover these cables with cord covers so as to prevent tripping hazards. Now, the partnership that we're requesting with the city of Sunnyvale is to have permission to use the space as described and basically to, to execute this proposal and to help with the setting up and taking down. So I, I think we're gonna table for comments till the end of the presentation. Um, so I'd love to hear people's feedback, but I, I think we'll table that until the, the end of the presentation. So if we go to the next slide, please, I'll talk about proposal number two, which is to build a Sunnyvale gingerbread village. Um, so the pictures that you see here are the gingerbread village from Queens, New York. And we're proposing to do something similar, inviting the community to make gingerbread houses that make up this village. Um, we are proposing to unveil this alongside the Sunnyvale holiday tree lighting event in December, and also display it somewhere that's viewable and accessible by the public. Um, this could be at the library, somewhere on Murphy Avenue or somewhere else. And that's one of the areas that we'd like to request partnership with the city of Sunnyvale. Next, please. So similar to proposal number one, uh, we're, we'd like to do this for the month of December 2021 um, and seek the city's uh, partnership with finding a location for it. After the display period, we can compost these gingerbread houses um, so we don't have to worry about storing them or, or, or dealing with them. Um, and, you know, in addition to finding a space for it, um, we also love the partnership with the city to help with taking down and setting up. Next, the third of the three proposals is to light up Washington Avenue. And so here you can see the mock-ups where we would like to install arches to make a light tunnel on Washington Avenue. This is from Sunnyvale Avenue to Murphy Avenue. And you can see in the picture on the bottom left, um, this is how it looked in, um, on McKinley Avenue. This is what residents have done last year for the winter holidays. And so we'd love to do something similar um, for this year. There's also this beautiful big tree on Washington Avenue at Murphy. And we're proposing to put solar lanterns on that tree um, and deck it up. We could also change it to make it look like big holiday ornaments as well. Um, and then the picture that you see in the bottom right is what a resident has done with their big tree in their yard, just a few blocks away in downtown Sunnyvale. Next slide. And so similar to the other two proposals, we'd love to do this during the month of December um, of this year um, on the south side of Washington Avenue from Sunnyvale to Murphy Avenue. Um, we can invite the community to participate and maybe deck up the lanterns in some shape or form. The partnership that we're requesting with the city is to have permission to do this, um, to provide electricity, and also to help with installing and taking down these light arches and the solar lights. Next. In terms of budget and funding, the numbers here show a very rough estimate of what the unit cost could be for the items that you saw in the three proposals. And so, um, you know, if this is a go, then we will seek to get funding for these proposals through sponsorships, through um, seeking funding from local organizations, et cetera. And then my very last slide is on next steps. But uh, so next, please, Ricky. So before I talk about next steps though, of course, um, I would love to open this up for discussion with um, city staff, with Mayor Klein and with the arts commissioners here and get your feedback. Well, 
I think it's a, um, I looked at the proposal and I think it, it looks really good. Um, you might, if, as far as getting funding, you might get local businesses and somehow um, have them, you know, if they fund it, like have an advertisement that says who funds it or their, a logo or something so they, the city knows who's funding it. Um, but I think it looks really good. I think the ideas are really good and I think the locations are really good as well. Commissioner Glukman. Yeah, I'd echo what, um, what was just said. And I'm curious and appreciated in the presentation that you showed that there was a lot of community engagement around the holiday programming. And I'm thinking that that's something that could definitely be enhanced, maybe getting resident input and continuing to drive that co-ownership so that it reflects the Sunnyvale community. Commissioner Vai. So I too really like the idea. What I would like to suggest though, is that we use materials and we make things that can be used the following year. So that we're not, I mean, I understand you can compost the gingerbread, but it would be nice if we could just use them and not have them a one, one time deal. Cause that seems kind of wasteful. Um, mm -hmm. I would also like to see us expand on this idea. And if there's any way at all that we could have like pop-up stores where some of our local artists can come and sell their wares and have a real Christmas, well, we wouldn't call it Christmas, a holiday fair and expand mm -hmm. it out. I think that'd be really fun. Yeah, and I also had another thought that the community center is a really good venue as far as open space to be able to do like a holiday Christmas scene, the community center would also be a good location. And also um, the senior center has like a little um, gift shop there. So if there was like a holiday tie-in, it could tie into the community center if people wanted to share, uh, to sell stuff. I don't know that we have, I know we have art and wine in July. I don't know that we have like I mean, if there's downtown association would have like uh, street closed off and have holiday where they might, but that would be a good idea. But also the community center would be also a good location. She was talking about a fourth potential location. I was thinking the community center might be a good potential fourth location. Commissioner Bight. Winnie, when this was done last year, how much time did it take to get the decorations up? Well, so one of the folks who had uh, led the organizing of that effort, uh, her name is Jen. I believe she's on the call. Um, I mean, I, I saw her in action. I helped a tiny little bit with the effort. Um, maybe, I, I don't know if we're opening up for public comments, um, but Jen can certainly address that. And we'll open up for public comment after uh, the presentation is complete. Commissioner Cerrone. Um, hi, Winnie. Thanks. Your presentation was great, and you know how I feel about it. Um, we've been we've been collaborating, and um, of course, I'm disappointed that we couldn't, you know, do the whole Redwood, as we call it, Redwood Park, and you know, have that space, and you know, span it from there. But um, we. Well, you see that Macy's being is being demolished right now, so it's going to be a construction zone and a hazard zone for some time. Um, although um, the developers for City Line are willing to um, help us out financially a little bit, um, so that's that's another thing that we can go back to uh, to talk to them. The Downtown Merchants Association is another one which is a one excellent argument, I think, for keeping it downtown. And um, the other thing, um, we can get free pu publicity, I believe, through the city because they have a, you know, they have a newsletter and they have people on um, arts lists and um, other lists, whatever they can pull in uh, to add us to their newsletters. But, um, 
yeah, I think publicity is something that um, we might need a little financial help on, depending, especially in terms of reaching out to uh, communities and neighborhoods. I think um, you and I and the other folks, uh, we can't go knock on all the doors. And I don't know that a neighborhood community leaders would necessarily, you know, um, the if the timing would be right so that we could go and present it to their group. Because I don't think they meet very frequently. And I don't know how a lot of, um, how many of them are very well attended. So uh, help with uh, reaching people, with reaching neighborhoods would be greatly appreciated. Any ways and means to do that. Uh, but um, I think, you know, the idea that it can be interactive and, and we can do workshops and, and things like that, um, you know, kids can get involved. Uh, it, it, it can, you know, we haven't even talked about uh, getting schools involved or organizations. I, I don't know if we want to go that direction or not. Maybe you guys would want to think about that, mull it over and you th think if that's a good idea or not. Um, I mean, there's lots of things if we got organization involved, for example, you could have a contest. I think they did that in San Jose. I'm not sure, like years ago, who had the best, who got the most votes for the Christmas tree that they decorated or brought, um, or who we can keep the competition factor out altogether. But um, that is a possibility to create interest. And my last comment is about um, pop-ups. I would love, I would dearly love to get local artists involved in this. Um, I think that, however, might take some money, might take some uh, help because that time of year, you know, you, you probably need to have a tent or a canopy or something unless we have an indoor place for them. And since we don't have an art gallery right now, and since we don't have a dedicated place for, um, artists to show their wares or sell their wares, um, it would be lovely to have them outside, you know, and be part of the, the whole festivities of, of the lights and the, whichever things that we choose to do. Um, we, have, we have lists that we can tap into for the art club, the Sunnyvale Art Club, but that just not really, uh, it really doesn't cover the range of art that we have available and, and artists that we have available. Like if Jeremy's still around, you know, he, uh, he can contribute as an artist in dance or in, in uh, mural painting, uh, get his mother down here and he and his mother can do something. I mean, you know, there's, there's lots of talent that just is dormant. We don't really know about it. So I would love to see that. I'd love to begin that. And when people say, well, we already have the Art and Wine Festival. Well, as somebody used to exhibit in Art and Wine Festivals, they're very expensive to get into. You know, you have to pay hundreds of dollars just for the space. And, you know, local, and it's become, you know, kind of this corporate, corporate in the sense that people um, who are very successful and can have agents and that sort of thing, they go from art fair to art fair. And so you tend to see more and more of the same people each time. And uh, so what I see that's mostly become is people go to drink wine and walk around. So you know, uh, I, think, I think we could do something very different uh, for a small amount of money and it was great reward. So I know that was a lot of comments, but thank you again, Winnie. Commissioner Veith. So I was thinking that perhaps we can get our corporate friends to donate towards this. Um, I know for sure there's at least one vacant shop on Murphy and maybe we could get them to pay the rent on it for a month and have artists put up little pop-ups there or just have, have them have have pop-ups other places so they pay for it so the artists don't have to take from their profits to pay for a space to show their work. So I, I don't know how amenable our corporate friends would be to that, but I think it could be a really good thing. Be a nice way for them to contribute to the community and it'd be a nice way to end 
a year and start a new one. Commissioner Vaughn. Yeah, so I, I just have more of a question around from the city. Um, maybe this is to staff. Um, what is the expectation here of the Arts Commission? We've been, you know, this is a proposal. Are we, are we to sanction this proposal? And have you given any feedback on, on what, how it impacts the city? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's a public proposal tonight that was agendized. Uh, for you guys to uh, to hear, um, <clears throat> technically speaking, it, that there's no um, formal action that will uh, take place by the um, board and commission tonight. Um, it's not a uh, it's not an actionable item. It's a presentation. What you could do is you could make a proposal. So call it, there's there's a number of different things you could do here. You could agendize it for future and further discussion, similar to what's taking place right now um, in terms of a study issue process to bring forward, uh, to have staff evaluate, you know, the viability of um, co-hosting or hosting this or partnering with the community to do, and downtown, um, the chamber, downtown um, city line, and all of the other community partners to uh, bring some sort of an event. Um, the other thing you could do is there's been a lot of good suggestions around um, contacting the Sunnyvale Downtown Association, um, City Line, and other businesses. <clears throat> and you have a really good partner on the call right now in the mayor who <laughs> knows a few people downtown and is a resident in that district. Um, to help make something like this um, get a little bit of steam, get some steam behind it, some partners, um, a few dollars, um, kind of refine the idea. Um, it's great that there's three different options that Winnie um, brought forth. I, I can see some of them would be easier immediately to partner on from a city standpoint, and some of them uh, would be much easier if you guys, as a commission or Winnie, or the committee, as it were, uh, to partner with the Sunnyvale Downtown Association. And then <clears throat> how it works a lot, of, a lot of the time now is th the powers that be in the downtown area, if that were to be the area, uh, then come forward and um, ask the city if there's any way we can partner on some of the, some of the things mentioned. Um, Sunnyvale Downtown Association already applies for an annual community um, events grant. So, and that's another avenue that this the committee could to go, could go down. Um, there is the uh, the pet parade that happens in. It did not happen last year because of pandemic. Hopefully, it'll happen this year. But they um, organized as a as a self group, put on a parade, came to city council, asked for fee waivers, asked for fee support. Um, and, and, and the like, and the city sponsored with like what was mentioned earlier with advertising and other things. So there's a lot of different stuff going on here. Um, but at the very least, it was a great um, <clears throat> presentation from Winnie. Thank you for that. And there's a lot of good information there for both the Arts Commission, uh, the mayor as he's sitting here as the liaison and staff to take away. And I will definitely be reaching out to Winnie um, post meeting to get more information and details and and discuss some of the things that were brought forward by both the commission and some of the points brought up by staff tonight. Mm -hmm. Great, Damon. Could I uh, uh, chime in with a question here? I, I don't know if we're doing the rounds right now. Oh. Sure. So you with for, of me? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll do my best. <laughs> okay. Um, so you mentioned earlier that some ideas are easier for the city to kind of say yes to, while other ideas are easier for the commission and downtown association, for instance, to partner on. What might be some of those things for one or the other category? You know, a community gingerbread house making and displaying at the library. We do things, we do community art displayed at the library already. 
um, doing something along those lines also at the community center. Um, that's a pretty easy, and that was little to no cost. I mean, other than some staff time to advertise it, create a space, um, and, and do some ongoing communication. That's a real low cost barrier to entry, low barrier to entry. And then we also could control those locations. Um, when you, when you talk about, um, downtown and the streets and the sidewalks, depending on where you want to go, the very first option that you're not pursuing this year, I think um, the mayor would tell you that that's a part of the city lines property um, as part of their development agency agreement. So um, we wouldn't necessarily, we, we would have to work or the committee or commission or whomever would need to work directly with city line on that. Um, some of the other ones we'd have to call our parks and streets and look into right of ways, um, things of that nature, electricity, um, you know, access, ADA access on things like the arches and public rights away. So there's, there's a lot of different variables that would come into play. We have time to work on and look at those things. Um, but the easiest one and the obvious one is the gingerbread house. And I don't want to say it's a contest, but it's a participation and where they'd be displayed um, for, for a long period of time. Um, the other fun thing with that is, you know, and, and I don't want to take too much of the commission's time on this tonight. I know we have a fairly light agenda and um, uh, we also want to thank uh, some rolling off commissioners, but um, doing something small scale to start with and kicking off the process and then buying a little bit of time to um, put in for a community event grant to help fund it and partner with the downtown and city line would give you some run up and it could be like an inaugural or a thing to get some other buzz and interest around so that, you know, and you can lay some plans out and get a little momentum. But again, that's up to the committee, um, the Christmas downtown committee or whatever you would end up calling yourselves, Winnie. And um, and how to, and how we can help facilitate and foster um, that type of activity now and then also into the future. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Commissioner Bite. Absolutely. So, can we put this on the agenda for next month so we don't lose traction on this? And we have a further discussion on on what involvement the commission wants to have or not have and how we can get this off the ground. I see Donna talking, but I don't know if she's trying to talk with us or. Oh, I was just thinking that like when we had Christmas in the park with the ice skating rink, I think a lot of corporations in the vicinity um, pay for that, but I know that was through city line. And that was a really awesome, you know, having a whole ice rink and, and security and all that stuff. And that was a pretty big event. I'm not, and I'm not sure what the process from initial thought to it actually happening was. I don't know if that was in the works two years ago or what, but it seems like if they could facilitate the ice skating rink for like two or three months, <laughs> it seems like they should be able to facilitate at Christmas in downtown. I'm not sure how it would work, but I think it would be possible. Yeah, that goes back to, um, that's a good suggestion. And that goes back to right. what I mentioned earlier that you wanna engage the right partners. And that was, uh, that was initially um, uh, a collaboration between City Line, Sunnyvale Downtown Association, who also, who eventually approached the city on how we can permit and partner on making it happen. And the city also stepped up in the end and it was a, it was a great um, partnership among um, several different um, entities. But again, that wasn't, that wasn't, that idea wasn't necessarily hatched or handled at the commission level. That's handled uh, with the right people in the room um, over a cup of coffee, probably at the bean scene uh, maybe one morning when the mayor's <laughs> holding office hours and getting the getting the right people um, to to getting the right people to.
to hear you and um, make things happen. That's one way. You, you guys still hear me? You can agendize this as well um, as a study issue. The study issue, um, if, if, so how you would do that, Agnes, a study issue form to staff. Staff would um, help uh, finalize the, do the staff portion of it. And then it would get agendized um, for discussion at either the next or we would, there's a certain time frame with that, but either July or August, we can talk about as commission, then you guys can rank it against any other study issues you might come up. <clears throat> and then it would um, be ranked and rated against all the other study issues uh, that the city hears from every other board and commission, including council study issues. Mayor Klein. Sure, and, and I'll just, you know, I'll be very short here. I, I think it's a great opportunity to partner and start something downtown. We already have, you know, certain downtown, the tree lighting and the downtown association. I do think that, you know, as uh, Damon said, you know, there's opportunities to, to partner with the community and display that art at the library, at the community center, conceivably some of the downtown, unused downtown uh, uh, restaurants or something of that nature. I do think that, you know, City Line did envision uh, all the retail or kind of first floor mixed uh, space that would go along, um, along Francis and along TAFE and conceivably along Murphy, set that flex space would be for display when we when those buildings are finally get built. But for a first year, I do think that's doing something kind of, you know, picking one or one or two of the projects and figuring out what can be done on a smaller scale and then seeing how that builds, uh, you know, uh, is exactly what we did with kind of the pet parade. The pet parade took uh, about two years to really get going before we actually had it. But um, it was figuring out the right partners. Is in, in that case, it was doing community grant, which for this year, we've already basically funded our community grants. So it would be something that we'd be applying for conceivably in January of next year for the Christmas of 2022. But, but I think conceivably with the partner city line downtown, you know, resident funding, you could do something this year. But I, I think that, you know, creating those partnerships, creating that, that, you know, history and kind of starting those traditions, I think would be very positive downtown. Thank you. Commissioner Veith. Uh, looks like you're still on mute. Sorry, I think rather than writing a study issue now, I think I'd like to do something small as the mayor suggested and get involved and support that this year and then go from there on what we think we wanna do in 2020, what would it be, 22? So I don't think I'd probably be writing a study issue for this this year. I think I'd like to start small and go from there. Commissioner Cerrone. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you, Agnes. Um, I think the study issue process um, at its very best will probably just lose this proposal along the way. Um, but, you know, I could be wrong. Uh, but. I think, you know, getting some sort of start um, this year, we've got the time to do a small start. To do a start this year um, is much better. And, you know, because we've got the enthusiasm now and we want to get you guys enthusiastic and we want to talk to people now. And, and now's the time to plan it and, you know, work out the rough details. And uh, um, so I think we should we should go with that. And then, you know, see what happens and learn and incorporate and, you know, make other contacts as we're doing this. And then, you know, then we can look at uh, next year. I also think that the community grant thing is already gone, right? Um, or it's... Oh, it's it comes... So the community grants uh, application process is uh, basically October through November. Through November, we present to the sub council subcommittee on community events, neighborhood grants in December, and then council 
And, and then they put forward a recommendation to council on funding what events or spreading the dollars about around, so to speak. And then in January, it's adopted by the council for that year. So um, it would be the fall of this year for any community event or neighborhood grants to happen January um, of 22 through December of 22. And, and there's an upper limit to the amount of money. Isn't there like $500 or? No, so there's a limit on the neighborhood uh, on the neighborhood um, block grants. Those mm -hmm. are about, I think it's 1500. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, community event grants, there's no limit. Um, but what they do is they try to, they take their total dollar amount and try to spread it across as many um, people who are interested to stretch the dollars and really pump it back into the community. Okay, well, that that's good to know. I updated me on that. Um, I, I had one, one other thing I was gonna say, and I can't remember what it is right now. So, <laughs> um, so go ahead, Suzanne. <laughs> Okay, so um, the just um, a final thing that I remembered as we're talking a few years ago, probably about 10, 15 years ago, actually, um, in downtown San, San Jose, the Fairmont at Christmas time, and I don't know if they still do it, um, but in their foyer, they actually did a, um, a gingerbread house decoration thing, a community um, build thing. So maybe we could leverage that idea of getting a local hotel with a foyer to sponsor it this year, you know, just to get a foothold and then see what the interest is by the community. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing, um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, is we'd like to do something this year, um, you know, start with a number of ideas. I'm hearing that ideas like the Gingerbread Village, maybe at a um, at a city facility like the library or a community center, those things are more feasible um, and can be done more easily. I'm also hearing that um, engaging with City Line and with the Downtown Association to get those partnerships going and see what we can do feasibly this year um, is another uh, next step. Um, and then, of course, in the later part of this year, applying for that community grant so that we can do something for the winter holidays of 2022. Um, so that, you know, like Sue was saying, you know, we can capture the, the support um, that we're hearing uh, from the community, from this group uh, now. That's great. And again, Winnie, I'll, I'll connect with you offline to make sure if there's any other things I can help you with or some ideas you have or contacts I can help put you in touch with. Um, and we'll just start a dialogue in, um, in helping support your efforts for this year, e even if that is or isn't through a city display location. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I remembered what I was going to say. Um, I just, uh, I wanted to say that um, Winnie gave a presentation on winter in the park. And I think all the comments said Christmas in the, in the park. And to me, that's a big difference. Um, I was hoping that it could be a multicultural kind of celebration where we, we didn't, we didn't um, pigeonhole it into just traditional something that Christian Americans do, you know, um, like if we get, we, we can also have uh, um, other kinds of uh, celebrations uh, represented that happen during this time of year, during December. And so I just want to put that out there that um, that was, that was something that I had in mind as a, as a partner in crime. <laughs> Hey, Winnie, before we move it up open to public comment, did you want to finish your presentation with the next steps? Um, sure. I mean, we could, but I think we, we mostly talked about it and we've kind of iterated on the next steps that I had initially drafted. So we can probably actually skip that slide. Okay. Chair Eskridge, can you please open it up for public comment? Okay. Um... So um, do we have any questions um, or public comment 
at this time? Let me check. Yes, we do. We have Jen Delera. Let me turn on the alarm clock, uh, uh, stopwatch. Uh, you will have three minutes to speak, um, and then I will give you permission to. Give me one second. Jen, you're good to go. Hi, I'm Jen Delora, and I have my husband, Adam Harold. Uh, I just wanted to say that this, uh, one of the questions I was asked was how long did it take us to do, we named it Candy Cane Ave, and it, only, it took us five days, but that was because it was just him and I setting everything up and just asking our neighbors if they would be into um, this, this Christmas dis display. But we got such a big buy-in from all our neighbors that actually people already on in our community want to grow uh, candy cane lane for next year, or actually for this year, I guess. Um, we also want to mention that my husband, he's a teacher and a football coach, <laughs> one of the local schools. And so the football team is willing to volunteer to help us uh, set some of these things up. <laughs> and then also people were also willing to donate funds to be able to uh, continue this tradition. And one of the things that you guys mentioned is just like, we just started last year, but to get this started, to get the ball rolling, then eventually we'll grow, grow to be much bigger. I've always been a big fan of like Willow Glen's Christmas display and then San Carlos's Christmas display. Um, but so that's kind of one of my goals to have here in Sunnyvale. Um, lastly, I love the ideas about the pop-ups and supporting local artists. I think that's really important. And especially if we can get some of the kids involved, um, just so they could show what they're doing in school, whatever uh, crafts and designs um, they're doing, that would be amazing. And then I also really love the idea of making this multicultural because we have so many diverse people in this area. I think that'd be great if they could do a display of whatever um, holidays mean for them during this time. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jen. Next, we have Frankie Ray Callahan. Frankie, you're good to go. Thank you. My name is Frankie Callahan. I've been a Sunnyvale resident for about 16 years now. And I think that this proposal is something that I'm really excited to see and uh, really appreciate Winnie for uh, bringing the community together through her corner art displays every month. Um, and people like Jen, who did the candy cane lane as well, I think this type of initiative can be very uh, contagious and can really spawn some organic uh, uh, displays in other neighborhoods. And we saw that this year uh, as we walked around the neighborhoods and saw different uh, streets kind of adopt their own uh, set of lights or what, you know, or look or feel for it. And it just, I think, brings Sunnyvale to life. Um, I've probably met more uh, of my neighbors through the conversations of the of the lighting this past holiday season. And it just really, I think, is something that um, can bring the, the community together after a time where we've been so siloed because of a pandemic. Um, that said, there's a couple of things from their discussion today that I just wanted to address. I do think that there's opportunities to partner with things like Girl Scouts and um, other communities uh, groups as well as the schools. I know my daughter is a um, high schooler over at Fremont and is always looking for community service events and ways to get involved. I think there is a lot of opportunity here to engage uh, the kids. I also love the idea of creating some type of, um, of marketplace, the, the fair idea. And I just wanna call out, I know Sunnyvale Community Center does a, a, a craft fair, I think in November. Fairwood Elementary has run a craft fair for the past five plus years, minus last year because of the pandemic. Uh, I know that because I've helped run that. Um, and Fremont High School has their, um, their craft fair um, the first week of December. So there's a lot of things happening in the space uh, around being able to you know, share talents. And, you know, and, and one of the things that the elementary school's craft fair always did was uh, it really advocate for the kids to be part of the, the merchants and sell and sell their their items and so I would just love to see an opportunity for us to bring that to the community and not just in these smaller um, uh, spaces and then we also have things like the maker space and uh, those where we can really start to um, connect with with our local artists and, and bring that to life um, I know City Line did the ice rink a couple of last year 
two, two years ago, whenever that was, um, I know it was really popular. And so if they, I don't know if they're planning on doing something like that again. I know there's a lot of construction happening downtown right now. So maybe uh, there's not the space to do that. But I do think that um, for all my conversations I've had with different people with City Line, there's a lot of excitement about Sunnyvale and they want to help bring it to life. So I do think there's opportunities there. Um, and I even think about the conversation around where you could put a gingerbread house, a loft has that beautiful open window. I could, you know, I just keep thinking about some of the, the opportunities there. And maybe, you know, there's an opportunity even to have some type of family friendly event similar to the wine walk and the art and wine festival, which might be like a hot cocoa walk or something like that uh, for the, the warm weather where we invite people to come out and, and um, you know, spend some time in downtown and, and connect with their community in, in ways that matter. Um, this is a town that I feel like we're sitting in the middle of a very large uh, populous area, but Sunnyvale always has felt small to me and it's about the community. Sorry, Frank, you Sorry. Look like I accidentally uh, <laughs> muted you for a second. Sorry about that. I, I wrapped it up by just saying, I think this is a great opportunity to, to bring community together and uh, thank you for, for listening. Thank you very much, Frankie. Do we have any more members of the public wishing to speak? We have one more. We have Valerie, Valeria, Kozak. So let me start up the timer again. Give me one second. Valeria, you're good to go. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is uh, Valerie. Uh, I, I go by Valerie. I um, First, I just want to say that I'm honored to be a part of this discussion, and I'm super, super excited. And thanks, Vinny, for putting this together. I, I'm from Ukraine originally, and I immigrated to the States five years ago. And this is probably the first time when I feel connected to the community and excited and, and happy about what, uh, being like, uh, being belonging to the community, like be able to do something. So I, I really appreciate all the time and efforts and I'm so looking forward to seeing how it will be uh, in December. And I also wanna say that the idea of a pop-up market is amazing. And I'm, um, it is something that I used to, we, December, usually December, January in Ukraine is very festive. We have a lot of lights, a lot of markets with hot chocolate, sometimes wine and, and some snacks and hot dogs. So it's really amazing and fun. And I feel after 2020 has been so hard uh, for all of us, it will be a great opportunity to, to get together, hopefully safely, and uh, to just celebrate the, the end of everything and uh, uh, the beginning of, uh, I guess, back uh, to normal life. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to say that um, it, it's been great ideas. I hope we can make it and I'm super excited. And it makes, you know, seeing the, uh, the slides makes me excited. Uh, and I can only imagine how fun it would be to be a part of uh, creating uh, these holiday spirit here in the city. Um, so yeah, just wanted to say that thank you and the community is looking forward to, to making Sunnyvale a better uh, place for holiday season. So yeah. Thank you very much. It looks like that concludes our public comment for uh, this discussion. Uh, Chair Eskridge? It looks like you're still on mute. We ready for our second presentation? Yes, we are. Okay, our second presentation is item 210635, recognition of service. Introduced, so this will be produced by uh, Larry Klein, the mayor of Sunnyvale. And please ask for any questions or public comment at the end of the presentation. Okay. Uh, so I wish we could have done this face-to-face -face at our annual, annual boards and commission recognition event, but we're still dealing with COVID of course, and you know the ongoing effects, at least for a while. So um, these congratulations will have to remain at a safe social distance. Uh, of course, Everyone knows I'm a big advocate for the arts. And of course, you know, the mission of the art commission at the end of the day, uh, I, as we see art brings out excitement, 
Oh, and, and I think, you know, just from like Winnie's presentation at night, that, that is a big part of that, that people really connect to art. And so, you know, it's an old, but, but I really love the variety of art that we have here in Sunnyvale, you know, both public and private art. Uh, but, you know, I think this, this is exactly what this commission is here for is to create that sense of belonging. You know, I appreciate the wonderful job that this commission does um, in, in promoting art in Sunnyvale, whether or not that's choosing new art and private development or the fantastic job you do in helping out each year in hands on the arts. Uh, but tonight I'm here to thank two of our members in particular, uh, specifically Jeremy Gluckman and Donna Eskridge. Uh, I wanna thank you both for serving on the commission. Uh, and especially Donna, I also wanna thank you for, for, re for serving as chair. And then of course, uh, applying and getting reappointed. Uh, so, so Donna and Jeremy, I wanna thank you both. And of course the rest of the commission um, for your continued work um, as residents in our city and, and for, your, for your love of art. You know, this will be my last appearance here as your liaison. So as always, please feel free to, to reach out to me or any of the commissioners or any of the council members. Uh, if you ever have any questions or um, ideas, you know, or just want to talk about art in Sunnyvale. So I look forward to seeing you in person sometime in the future, uh, hopefully at this year's State of the City event on October 2nd. Um, but, you know, may your love of art flourish here in Sunnyvale for years to come. Thank you. And thanks for your service to our city. Thanks. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Donna. Well, thank you, um, uh, Mayor, and uh, greatly appreciate it. I love Sunny Valley when I lived away. It's amazing, the art, and we appreciate it, and I appreciate being appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other comments? I just wanted to say thank you to the Mayor for his time on the commission. He's always super engaged uh, where the arts are concerned. And I think um, I speak on behalf of all the staff where we say we really appreciate his passion and support of um, what we do in this corner of the world. I also wanted to say um, thank you to Jeremy for stepping up and being um, a, a solid contributor to the Arts Commission and all that we've accomplished over the last several months, we brought the master plan for public art to fruition. We, um, you know, approved some really neat public art projects that are one of which has already been installed um, at the Washington Swim Center um, and then will be installed at the Fair Oaks Park. And um, so thank you for all that. And then I also wanted to thank Donna again for her time and then as the mayor mentioned your continued interest and service um, going forward uh, with the arts commission and i reiterate all the fun stuff we did with jeremy but this is the last time jeremy's serving so i i spoiled him with all of the riches um <laughs> the other thing i would mention is that in july uh, we're going to um select or when i say we it's the the commission is going to select the chair and vice chair. So please give some thought to either throwing your hat in the ring or nominating your fellow um, commissioner uh, to uh, help lead the charge um, in the coming year. And um, and then I think I'm glad to see Kristen's here because there are some, some quick updates we have. I don't wanna take all the fun stuff. I know she's working on um, getting a, the utility box art project out and I believe we have a really important meeting on Monday um, coming up that Kristen would probably be excited to share with everybody. Um, so I'll turn it over to her for a couple of quick um, public um, art updates. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I, I would like to reiterate my thanks to um, Jeremy and Mayor Klein. Um, we're gonna miss your background, Mayor Klein. Um, can you pass that on to the next liaison? <laughs> but yes, um, and Donna, we're, we're happy to have you back for another 
another round, um, but there, I do have a couple of quick announcements. Um, as Damon mentioned, we, the Washington Community Swim Center, um, the artwork has been installed. Uh, however, the swim center is still under construction. So uh, you can't get up close and personal to it at this point. You will be able to see the large panel that is on the wall, kind of through the security fencing on the front of the building. But the two sculptures, the crocodile sculpture that we did the handprint project on, as well as, I, I'm sorry, the octopus project that we did the handprints on, and then the crocodile sculpture are in place, but they're currently wrapped very heavily in bubble wrap until the landscaping is in all around it and lighting and all the last minute details are, are there. But um, spent several days on site last week helping install that. So that was pretty exciting. Um, as Damon also mentioned on Monday, we are meeting uh, the Public Art Selection Committee is meeting for the Civic Center Amphitheater. Uh, so the RFQ for that went out about five weeks ago, six weeks ago. Um, uh, June 7th was the deadline. And I'm happy to say that we had over 60 artists who were interested. Um, so the committee is definitely going to have their hands full trying to whittle that down to five to go on to the next phase. Um, they won't have to review all 60, but uh, it might be close. Some of them won't be a part of that, but we did have a lot of interest in that particular commission. Um, it is a large commission, so it's very exciting. And the utility box, um, we are just getting ready to release that. I just need a little bit more time on my hands and that'll be out ASAP. So we're looking forward to that also. Um, there's going to be 13 boxes uh, that will be uh, up for grabs. So I think that's it for now. Oh, and I just want to also mention uh, Winnie. I don't know if she's still on, if she is still on the call um, very quickly that we did um, have an art presence downtown for Pride Night on June 3rd. And we partnered with the Sunnyvale Art Club who did five smaller canvases, 16 by 20 canvases, and they each took a letter of the word pride uh, and then did a painting based around that. And Winnie has a sculpture there that is made out of, um, you know, the little balls that are in the kids' ball pits that they play in. So it's made from the plastic balls uh, in the rainbow colors um, for pride. And so we have now moved all of that over to the library and it's in the fiction room. So the library is open. Um, so check the website for hours, but before you go down, but um, if you do go to the library, make sure you, you hunt up that little exhibit. That's it. Thank you. Okay, next is the consent calendar. Since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask can I ask her a question? Is that oh, sure. out of order? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, Kristen, can you uh, talk a little bit more about the commission that's being formed for the um, art for the uh, Civic Center? Like, what's the process? Um, how, how can we know what's going on? Um, that sort of thing. So, um, we can announce it um, at the Arts Commission meetings. Um, you will be the voting body uh, that will be making a referral to city council on this. So we do have Susanna is sitting as the liaison for that particular uh, committee. The committee met uh, back in, gosh, it got postponed a couple of times because of COVID, <laughs> but um, several months ago. And at that point in time, kind of discussed possible locations and how to rank the locations and what we felt as a committee was going to be the best locations. There were three locations that were selected. Um, one is the amphitheater, which that RFQ is the one that we will be reviewing the artists qualifications, not concepts, just the qualifications on Monday. Uh, and then we also have a, um, the, there are four interior niches uh, that have been in, city, in the new city hall that have been identified. And then there will be a rotating uh, art area, well, a single sculpture um, out at the corner of All-America Way and Matilda. 
Um, those RFQs have not been released yet. They will be released closer to uh, the end of construction because there's no reason for us to, to do it that early. Um, so it'll be another uh, six months or so before those will be released. And for those, we will have also have committees um, and we will have a member of the Arts Commission sitting on those committees. So you'll hear more about that as we go along. Okay, so, but for now, um, Susanna and you, or one of the other of you will be uh, updating this at our commission meetings and what's going on? Yes. Great, great. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right, now the consent calendar. <laughs> Since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on a consent calendar item? Not at this time. I will now, now ask a motion for my colleagues. Uh, to, move, um, to approve the consent calendar for um, May 19th, 2021. Any commissioners uh, like you first? I move the consent calendar. Do we have a second? I second. Okay, um, so city staff, please conduct a random order voice vote. Commissioner Glukman. Approved. Commissioner Veith. Approved. Commissioner Sor uh, Vice Chair Cerrone. Approved. Chair Eskridge. Approved. Commissioner Vaughn. Approved. Motion passes five to zero. Okay, um, next standing item, consideration of potential study issues. Next on the agenda is item 210634, Arts Commission proposed study issue calendar year 2022. Currently, we do not have any uh, pending study issues. Okay, and do we have any non-agenda items or comments? Commissioner, since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use a virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. Do we have any non-agenda items or comments from commissioners? None at this time. Staff, do we have any non-agenda items or comments? None at this time. Oh, I do have one comment. So Jeremy, oh. <laughs> where can we get your book? <laughs> Amazon, what's the name of your book again? We'll talk about that later. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. You don't want the world to know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then I, um, this meeting is adjourned at 8.07. I want to thank everyone for your participation in tonight's meeting. Thank you, everyone. Jeremy, take care, thank brother. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys. We'll see you downtown, Jeremy. Yeah. Look forward to it. Okay. Thanks, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye. Peace. <laughs> Thank you, Winnie.